Hey yo, happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. Uh, hope you've been enjoying the holiday. I apologize because it's been so long, but work has been crazy, life has been crazy, things have been expensive, and not a lot has been happening with the truck, which is just humming along just fine. 22,000 miles, gone out on a couple trips, but uh, not a lot of improvements until a box came in the mail. So it's one of these boxes I've been waiting for for a long time, as I think many of you have who have heavy duty Rams. Uh, and that is the AEV Procal Snap uh, Speedometer Corrector. So got that in the mail. So I figured I'd throw that on tonight. Uh, actually did an uh, check to see how big my metric 35 inch tires are. Hmm, not as big as I hoped they would be. Anyways, so hopefully this will be a quick and easy uh, install to help us um, correct the speedometer, help the transmission shift a little bit. And for me, uh, turn off the annoying uh, low air pressure uh, light uh, so I can drop the air pressure in the tires, uh, improve the ride a little bit, get some more longevity out of them. So stay tuned. All right, let's take a look at what we get in the box. I ordered mine from CJC Off-Road for, I believe, $250. The price has gone up a little bit, but that was including shipping. So let's go ahead... So here's the actual component, pretty straightforward. And then what it looks like, aside from the ubiquitous, so you get uh, wiring, and then of course stickers, and then a pretty nice, uh, for what I can tell, set of directions uh, on how to kind of march through uh, installation. So let's go ahead and take a look inside the truck and um, follow the programming and see if we can uh, address the tire size and the air pressure issue. All right, so if you're not tracking, the actual OBD port is hidden right here, at least on my truck. So what you have to do uh, is go to AEV, uh, the website, and get to the install guide. And what you have to do is pair it uh, you have to take this out and uh, use the wiring harness that's attached to actually pair the OBD, uh, the Procal snap that, that goes near. So it's just a couple of jumper wires. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this out and uh, see how difficult it actually is. All right, crew. So what you have to do is you uh, loosen this tab right here and it slides out of the bracket up in the top. And then there are four little gray tabs. One, two, three, four. It's these things uh, that hold the wiring in, and then you gotta take the next step, and that is to put the jumper uh, harness into the appropriate ports in the AEV instructions. So this is what it looks like after you put those two gray clips back. Uh, you've got the jumper locations at nine and one. They are marked nicely, and in the AEV instructions, they say that this one where the blue is is port nine, and then port one. I believe they're in there tightly enough. And so then what you do is you have to find another connector up under here. I'll show you that in a second and, and then run it up there. I'm not gonna uh, install this back in until I know that everything works over here first. All right, I will, um, it was too much of a pain to try to get underneath the dash and show you where the star port is. Suffice it to say, I followed the instructions plug the other end, the non-jumper end, but the uh, connector end into the star port, which is kind of tucked way underneath, at least on the 2021, 2500s, underneath where the uh, emergency brake releases. Put everything back assembled and uh, uh, follow the instructions uh, to um, sync the Procal snap to the truck. And that was successful. So. What I'm going to do now is adjust the tire height. So the instructions are to set the equalizer values for the tire size. And if you watched my other short video, my um, BFG metric 35, so 3, 15, 70, or 17s actually measure in at 34 and 3 quarters of an inch. Because I'm going to drop the air pressure around the truck to like 45 pounds in the front and 40 in the rear, because I don't really carry that much weight. I'm going to put it at 34.7. So it says here to adjust it to 
three, four, three, four, five, six, seven. So that should be, oops, since I can do my math right, three, four points. So I'm wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, we should leave it like that. And then it says, press and hold uh, the combination of the brake and the resume button for three seconds. Program is complete when the horn sounds twice. The brake button is blinking. Well, that didn't work. So let's try it again. Drop the emergency brake just to be sure. Hold brake pedal. Uh, hold the resume button. No dice. Let's try resetting everything and doing it again. Well, that was interesting. So I was following the instructions and suddenly I got a lot of warnings on my ABS system. Let's see if I can get to focus. ABS system light is on, brake light is on, um, rear parking sensors don't work, and uh, sway bar is messed up, and the um, ABS is off. So that's a problem. Let me see if I can put it in a different jumper. Uh, Make sure that the Procal hasn't goofed anything up. All right, crew, much time has passed. I will fill you in on what has happened. That being said, if you want to install this, you can either go up through the bottom to get to uh, the star connectors or, pro tip, easier way to do it here. Just grab this, give it a tug. You can see in here on the tradesmen there are actually two star connectors. And you'll see that wire with the tag on it, focus, is into the closest one, and I think it works. There's also, if you look below and down, there is another set. I will talk in a little while about all the drama and shenanigans that happen when every error code turned on the truck because that got plugged into the wrong port. And there seems to be no rhyme or reason guidance from AEV is just plug into a different port. So I think I got that, but I will say it is super difficult to get this figure done without like throwing your back out and or cursing a lot. Just pull off this and when you're done, pop it back in so you avoid some bloody knuckles. Stay tuned. All right, after programming and a lot of back and forthing, um, I dropped the air pressure down, and so far there are no uh, low pressure lights. So you can see I gotta drop the rear down a little bit more. I just kind of picked around 45 pounds. I actually actually set with the Procal a 35 PSI cutoff. That's the lowest you can go. But I will add that that is still here. Now that does seem to be a feature of if you goof up something with the install that hangs around and now I'm going to have to see if it'll just go away with a couple of um, cycles. I'm going to take this for a drive and then we're also going to check and see um, how the uh, GPS compares with the speedometer uh, for the tire size. All right, I don't feel like filming when I'm driving, uh, but for uh, YouTube's sake, truck says 55 miles an hour. GPS says 54, 53, 54. Uh, so I think we're pretty close. Um, definite improvement in terms of having the truck thinking it's going as fast as it's actually going. Um, still annoying uh, trouble uh, engine, truck engine light. Uh, am driving out to see if I just cycle it a couple times if it'll shut off, if I buy an OBD, OBD2 reader, if I can get rid of it that way. 
Um, stay tuned for uh, what the resolution is and some final thoughts. And one more stop after the last video, a restart of the truck. And the check engine light is off. So all appears to be well, all appears to be functioning. So far, so good. Um, probably won't have time tonight to do final thoughts, but uh, I'll pull something together just on my take on the install and the worth of uh, AV's Procal Snap. Hey folks, well, it is 24 hours after I installed AEV's Procal Snap in the uh, Ram 2500. And I want to give you my wrap up thoughts. So, um, just from the beginning, this guide is dis described as a pretty much plug and play, pretty straightforward update. And for the most part, it is. Just follow the instructions kind of straightforward. However, if you have any pucker factor about seeing your dashboard light up like a Christmas tree, don't start your install at, say, 7 o'clock at night, the night before you have to go to work for a really important meeting on your daily driver, which is what I did. <laughs> it resulted in a... Uh, a bit of, um, oh my gosh, what have I done, kind of thing. So, install, pretty straightforward. You gotta be comfortable unhooking uh, a bit of wire harness underneath your dash. Uh, it's not in the instructions, but I would strongly encourage you, Ram 2500 owners, to just go ahead and pop off the uh, the piece of trim where your light selector switch is mounted. And that makes getting access to the star blocks so much easier. Um, so you don't have to like gyrate, cram yourself up under the dash like I did at first until I was like, well, this is dumb. Um, you still gotta do that a little bit to get the OBD2 connector out and so you can put the jumpers in. It's it's not bad. Give yourself an hour. Am I still super excited that the component has the, like, it is a not satisfactory answer to me that AEV's feedback to when you plug into the star block, like, and all the dash lights up and nothing works and your uh, ABS, what, ABS, for me it was like cruise control, ABS, sway bar disconnect, um, my trailer brake controller, all this stuff suddenly didn't function. Um, stability control, everything went out. I don't claim to be an expert and understand how RAM has done its telematics slash wiring. But just the answer of being like, unplug it from one port and plug it into a different one and restart the process and see how it works doesn't give me a lot of warm and fuzzies, right? So, does it do its job? Once you get past all those steps, it does leave the uh, check engine light on if and you had to go on the internet a little bit and poke around and says, so a lot of the combinations are like, hold the brake pedal down and hold this button for three seconds with the module installed. And sometimes the programming would go through and you would get like a beep, beep, beep from the truck. Sometimes the brake light, the, emer uh, the emergency brake, parking brake light would come on and flash at you and you're supposed to do it again. If you do that too many times, apparently the check engine light stays on, but all you have to do, and it says it usually, goes away after driving a truck for a while, going through a couple run cycles. Which mine did. It runs fine now. And everything that it was supposed to do, it does. So my low tire pressure light is off. Um, as I showed in the videos from yesterday, it's pretty close to what the GPS says. And the GPS might have a little bit of lag in it. So it's about as dead on as it's gonna get. 
If I did want to change the gearing on the truck, that is an excellent option to have. So you can input your tire size, input the new gearing you want to have, especially if you want to go to something like 37s. I think you need to re-gear the truck. A lot of people don't because they don't have gears for um, the fourth and a half gen Rams as of this filming in July 2022. The module works. I don't like all the lights that come on. And um, also for you tradesman owners, and I probably should have put it, I will, you know, highlight this if I put it in the title. There is an extra star block, star connection block down for tradesmen. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's for like snow plows or the upfitter switches probably. Um, which unfortunately we can't get on the tradesmen power wagons. Be aware of that. And don't be surprised when it, what you see down there is different than what the instructions show. So, does it work? Yes. Is the install as easy as some might describe? I would say no. Is it worth $250? So, I understand supply chain, things from China, everything's more expensive. CJC Off-Road got this thing out to me very quickly. Didn't have to pay shipping, although the box, you saw how big it was, wouldn't be much. I'm still torn. I think it would definitely be worth it if you were re -geared. Is it worth $250 to me to be able to drop my tire pressure down and not see the little low pressure light on? For me, it might actually be because I hate lights on my dash. Um, there is the, it helps the transmission shift. I haven't noticed anything, but my tire size wasn't all that much different. Um, I like, those are really the main reasons, right? So you get the speedometer working right, the transmission, the low TPMS light goes away, and the gearing. I am not sold. I'm not gonna take it off. Frankly, I don't. And there is an option to can return everything to factory settings, but I, you know, I'm kind of talking myself out of it or into liking it because I really want to be able to run lower tire pressures than the uh, 60 pounds that the truck comes from the factory kind of requiring. Uh, I think that's dumb. Or for a vehicle that doesn't tow that much, mine, and is designed for like on a day-to-day, -day, even like the regular Ram 2500s don't need to, and that aren't towing, don't need to run 60-ish plus pounds of air pressure in my opinion. Um, that's one man's take. I'm not saying it's a bad product. I'm just saying be prepared for some um, potentially, depending on what your like threshold of like, oh my gosh, every light is turned on on my truck and I can't take it anywhere now. Be prepared for that. You need to troubleshoot it because those error messages won't get won't go away until you get it put into exactly the right position. Um, once it's in, once you get it programmed, pretty straightforward. And in terms of like my like the outcome, very pleased. So that's my take. Pricey, little pucker factor. It does what it's advertised to do. So for you, if the TPMS light is a big deal, get it. If you really wanting to match your speedometer to what the car's actually doing, get it. Especially if at some point we can re-gear these things, I would say definitely get it. If you can find them. This is part of the problem. I had been waiting for months. Um, I had gone through Northridge 4x4 because they had some advertised. They never showed up, and when they weren't even carried in their catalog anymore, I asked about it, they just gave me a uh, um, immediate refund, like they knew it wasn't going to be coming back. Uh, CGC Off-Road, who I've always had good luck with, turned around and sold it within a few days, but they had one left when I ordered it in, um, I want to say early June, and it just still took me a while to get in. So if you can find them, I would say thumbs up as long as you know what you're getting into. No special tools needed other than maybe like a set of like a flathead, little tiny flathead screwdriver to unclip the OBD2 port if you can't really get up in there and a flashlight. So I hope all is well with you. I apologize for not having more content. The world has been crazy. 
uh, at work. Uh, gas prices have definitely slowed everything down. I hope to have a big advertisement, sort of big announcement, in the coming weeks for a big piece of kit that I've been saving up for for a while for the truck. Stay tuned. I said that the last time, and then it was like I remember, two months since I've done the video. The truck is doing great. Zero problems. Couldn't be happier. Oh, addendum. There's that one thing with the tradesmen's um, power wagons with the Star Wars. Other than that, I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the summer with a little bit of time outdoors, even though the weather appears to be crazy. Um, praying for good health for all of you, for fun adventures, uh, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a good one.